Are we live? Uh, okay, fuck it, we'll do it live. What up guys? Coming at you with another AMA episode. Gonna give you some life updates, just stuff I was doing in the last couple of days. And then, you know, we'll get into the AMA. So I went river rafting with the boys. How this came about was our buddy Joe hits us up and he goes, hey, I wanna do some class five rapids river rafting. None of us had ever been river rafting and Joe's kind of out of his mind. He's just that guy in the friend group who's just like, you know, let's go to Norway. And you're like, oh bro, like, you know, what? But we went and it was really fun. And I was kind of dragging ass in terms of like booking this trip and going, I've just been so busy um, with everything with the company, obviously. And I'm trying to like move more stuff to San Diego and I'm just like kind of back and forth. There's a lot going on, uh, all good stuff for sure. Yeah, I was just like, I don't know, you know, I just want to like dial in, you know. But eventually all the boys started to jump into this river trip, you know, Austin Tex, Tanner Tex, and they're all like, you know, let's do it, let's do it. So I'm in. So we drive about five hours to the Kern River and on the way we're like Googling it, it's called the Killer Kern. It's claimed like 400 plus lives. So we're a little nervous, you know, uh, Tanner's not because he's like a water expert. He survives Nazare and Mavericks, Wipeouts and Jaws and all these waves. But some of us are like, dude, I don't know about this shit. But we get there and it was just super fun. Just it's a blast being with the boys. What's so funny to me lately is I've been posting some content from that trip. And every time I post a video, there'll be people commenting, bro is high, bro is drunk, bro's hitting the za, you know, the zaza. No, I'm not at all. Like I'm literally, I haven't hit the za in months. I just haven't, you know, I'm completely sober in every single one of those videos. And so is Tanner. Tanner doesn't touch any substance at all. Austin might sometimes hit the za, but he really wasn't a lot on that trip. I have some other friends who hit the za a lot, but whatever. Like most of the people you see in those videos are completely sober. And it just got me thinking like, guys like especially young men are just not out there having fun and being silly anymore and that's a big problem i think um if you can't joke around sober and like get into that like silly playful mood that's a concern um and it's insane to post these videos and you just get spammed with comments being like bro is high like what are you what are you talking about just because i'm making uh, some jokes and laughing with my friends like people have lost their damn minds thinking that but whatever. Um, what we did for food there, and this is a good thing if you want to know what to do when going on a trip, if you can bring a cooler and have somewhere where you can cook like an Airbnb or even bring like a portable stove, do that. It's very easy. We brought a bunch of ground beef, sweet potatoes, apples, eggs, other fruit, uh, some yogurt, uh, some milk and protein powder, we brought a bunch of Santa Cruz paleo protein powder. We obviously brought a bunch of electrolytes and other supplements. That is what we did there. And then as far as like to-go snacks, that guy uh, who started Way Better Bar, his company is now called Eat Jacob, and it's a really good protein bar. You know, you're talking uh, grass-fed whey protein, beef tallow, honey, dates, and collagen is like his new recipe. He sent me a box of those, and it was crucial for a trip like this because I liked having snacks on the go. The river-like company that we had like two guides and eat one in each boat, they like had some food at lunch, but like obviously like most of that stuff, it's just not stuff that I eat. I'm like, oh, we have sandwiches. So it's fine. I open up the Way Better Bar. There's also these Lineage Provision beef sticks. However, I won't even like put those on too much because they're like really expensive. They're like 18 bucks for a bag. So I do have some bags of those for when I travel. But, you know, and this is beef and beef organs and they actually taste like pretty good. So if you want to try those out, check it out. But the Eat Jacob bars are cool. You can use the code Santa Cruz if you ever want to try those. So I had my options for snacking there. And yeah, product wise, we launched Peach Electrolytes. They're going crazy. Like they're selling so much. People are saying it's the best flavor they've ever tried. It's amazing. My friends, some of my friends think it's their top flavor. I don't know if people just like think it's the best flavor ever because it's a new like novelty flavor for them. But with the people I know really well who aren't afraid to tell me I don't like this flavor, I love this flavor, many of them are saying it is their top flavor. So that's interesting to me. I think it's absolutely fire. I've been drinking a lot of peach. The lychee should be on Prime any day now. So it's just Amazon's taking their sweet time with it. We launched our Sun Bomb. So you can go check this out. I was putting it on me at the river, obviously, because we were like out in the sun and it works absolutely amazing. So I was pretty stoked on that. And yeah, the river rafting was hella fun. Got back and I'm getting back into the routine. So weight training wise right now, what I'm trying to do is hit weights hard about three to four days a week, more like three just because I've been so busy. And when I was talking to Fonzian actually here, he was telling me what he's been doing is going into the gym a few times per week and ripping the weights as he calls it. Like He's doing pretty high intensity training. Um, not that I haven't done that, but I think I've ramped up the intensity a little bit on the weight training because I'm limited on time. So now when I go into the gym, I'm like, okay, let me pick a, a few exercises and just rip them and not worry so much about, you know, hitting all the exercises I want to hit, but hitting stuff that feels good that I can go heavy on 
and it's been good. I've been recovering from a bit of a shoulder injury, which happened um, just a combination of things, but mostly at jujitsu. I was like defending a head and arm choke, and it was like, oh, just like felt like weird. But then for like a week or so after, it was just like, you know, really sore and stuff. I could still surf. I could still lift a little bit, but it definitely like, you know, just sucked for a little bit. What I did to heal that is functional range conditioning. So FRC is what it's called. You can also look up Kin Stretch on YouTube. Trust me, guys. And there's also a guy on Instagram, the supple athlete who demonstrates all this stuff. It is the best thing to do if you have a shoulder injury, back injury, neck injury, knee. It's the best stuff. It's what the pro athletes are doing. I've done content on it before. But I'm telling you, if you're hurt, stop just doing the normal physical therapy stuff. I'm not saying some of it isn't good. I definitely do some of that banded stuff, of course. But FRC, functional range conditioning, is the way to get better. Trust me on that. I got my internal range of motion back. My shoulder is feeling great. I'm going to jujitsu tomorrow. I'm going to ease back into it, though. So that's been uh, what's going on. We're trying to ramp up our beef tallow production. Some dude just stopped me while I was in my car driving back from filming with Albert at the store. And he's like, I got your beef tallow. Like... I saw it in stock for like a minute and I got it. Yeah, those products, um, we're ramping up production. They're just selling extremely fast. We are selling better priced beef teller products than anyone. We're just simply choosing to not take a lot of profit. What should you do as a company? Should you do, of course, in air quotes, when a product like our just normal beef teller is selling out like that? You're supposed to raise the price to control the flow so you don't sell out so quick. You're still making more money because of the demand. We just choose to not do that. Uh, is it dumb? I don't know. I don't think so. I want people to get something for a good deal. And it has created a lot of demand for it when people are like, this is the best price product ever, best quality. I'm going to get it. Of course, it's a no brainer. So ramping up production on that. Love you guys. Let's jump into your questions. AMA, you've left your questions below. I know it's been a little bit since I've done one of these episodes, but we're going to have some fun guests on. Cheeto Vera is going to come on. Um, we got some health, uh, some doctors coming on, Dr. Justin and Dr. Evan Brand. And so, yeah, but today, Let's dive into these questions below. What do you got, Albert? AMA, this guy wants to know a story time on how we started Santa Cruz Medicinals. Totally. I can tell you exactly how this all started. So years, I mean, this must have been eight years ago, something like that. My buddy Joe was actually working in a lab in Santa Cruz, and he was working with a lot of, I'm not even going to say it too much because it sometimes gets demonetized, but uh, CBD, okay? And basically what he had made is a coconut oil product with a lot of it in there. And if you know, it's, you know, it has some anti-inflammatory benefits. People use it for pain, for, you know, anxiety. There's a lot of benefits of that compound. Keep in mind, this is not the compound that gets you all loopy and stuff. It literally has no psychoactive effects. Okay. So, and the reason I don't get too deep into this is because the, you know, the, the algorithm. Okay. Like if you say these words too much, but you know what I'm talking about. We started taking that product ourselves and just putting it into smoothies and stuff. We were already into health. And then we started giving it to our friends who are pro athletes our buddy Todd Duffy, um, my buddy Cal Tierman, who's a pro big wave surfer, they started taking this stuff and they were like, this is amazing. Like they were coming like to our house and like raiding our supply of this stuff. And so Joe and I were like, well, we could sell this. There's, you know, not a product as potent um, out there as this. Uh, we could definitely, you know, Joe's good at, great at label design. And obviously I'm like, well, I could market this. I, I'm, I am, you know, involved in athletics. I know a bunch of these pro athletes. Like I know social media a bit. This was back when Instagram was like, you post a photo of stuff. So we launched with just that product. That was our first product, just a coconut oil with a potent dose of CBD. And it took off. It took off. It just absolutely took off. Like, it was insane. And we started adding more products to that. And then what we realized is, well, CBD is just like a certain thing. It's a little more niche. We want to make supplements that are just better than what is out there for a better price and have the highest quality ingredients, just sticking with that theme. And so we started to launch stuff. There's tons of stuff we tried and that um, didn't work. Like we had a trail mix with no seed oil. So it was coconut oil and it was stevia chocolate chips. And it was so good. I love that trail mix. Um, but the problem is it would melt, you know, so we started to ship it to people. And during the summer months, it started to melt. So then we would have to add, you know, freezer bags. And that just killed all the margin of that product. So we tried certain things. The food of the gods was like a mixture of supplements that I was taking daily. And, you know, I would mix it all and then like take it. And my friends were like, what is that? And I just started calling it food of the gods. Everybody around me started taking it. And so we were like, you know what? We can make this product and get it out to people. So we started with, you know, that one. The electrolytes took years to, to really perfect and make, but I knew I wanted it to be a salt-based electrolyte. A lot of our friends were taking LMNT and I feel like we could, uh, we could improve on that formula by using a real sea salt and pink Himalayan salt, which have more trace minerals and then using a better, more gut-friendly form of magnesium. And that's what we did and making them more affordable than LMNT and way better tasting in my opinion. Um, so that's basically what we've done. And obviously I love social media. That's really helped me to grow, but hundred percent. It's funny. Like 
what I do on social media is genuinely who I am on and off camera. And I can't stress that enough. Sometimes I've had influencers um, uh, like Squid Pactor. No, this isn't like some anti thing on Squid Pactor. But when we met up in Austin, Texas, he was like, all right, we'll go grab some bagels and then we'll go do the podcast. And I was like, I don't eat bagels. Like this isn't some like thing that I just do on camera and say I eat these foods. Then off camera, I'm like not or I'm like way more like loose in my diet. I literally eat this way. You can ask anybody that knows me. You know, people always joke, what if I catch you at a McDonald's or something? It's like, unless I'm filming a video bashing McDonald's, I, it's just, you know, I live this way. So it's been very easy for me to do. So yeah, that is uh, how it started. Let's get on to the next question. Brendan, I'm struggling with acne. What do I do? Okay, let's dive into this from a three-pronged approach. The first step if you're having acne is you need to try the Santa Cruz Nissan's diet or some type of gut healing diet, Okay. On the more restrictive side, we have carnivore. You could try that short term, but I don't think it's a good long-term diet. What's going on with a lot of people is we have something called the gut skin access, and you also have a gut barrier. So there's something called leaky gut, which can absolutely cause acne. Acne can come from a few places. It can come from hormonal, right? And that's usually acne around the chin, around the jawline, those deeper pimples. It can come from bacterial, which you'll often see around the forehead, around the nose, um, it can come from immune function. Like if you have really decreased immune function, people, when they get sick, they'll often notice a breakout. So you need to look at these different factors. Okay. For hormonal acne, what you can do to balance your hormones is get better sleep, support your detoxification pathways of estrogen detoxification, and not add more uh, endocrine disruptors into your life through plastics, through foods, stuff like that. Supplements like N-acetylcysteine, DIM, okay. D-I-M, diendomethylene is something you can add in. Calcium d glucurate or CDG is a good thing to look at if you're dealing with that hormonal acne, increasing your sleep, eating more proteins and healthy fats, and a little bit less carbohydrates, that can all help, okay? I would definitely stay away from testosterone boosters, even stuff that I'm a fan of like Tongat Ali, I would stay away from that if you're dealing with hormonal acne. All while you're doing that, you need to be looking at the gut barrier. Your gut barrier can basically become dysfunctional due to too much antibiotic use, which sometimes you have to take antibiotics if you get staph or something, so not anti-antibiotics, uh, but antibiotics can damage that gut barrier. Alcohol use can damage that gut barrier, and also just certain things, like if you have a wheat intolerance and you're having increased zonulin production with consuming wheat, that can negatively affect your gut and cre create gut permeability. What happens when you get gut permeability, also known as leaky gut or intestinal permeability, is you eat food and maybe you're eating some wheat, right? A little bit of that actually gets outside of your gut, which is supposed to be closed, and your immune system then ramps up to defend against that because it doesn't want particles of food to simplify it around in the body. So this can cause basically an immune reaction and disrupt your body in many different ways. So to heal the gut, you can look at stuff like glutamine powder in the morning. You can look at stuff like lysine, but the big thing is just eliminating any of those gut irritating foods. That's going to be different for everybody. I do see a lot of people having success going animal-based or carnivore short-term and then adding some stuff back in and seeing how they feel. Now, really good foods for your gut that are going to also help your skin are is stuff like bone broth and collagen-rich proteins. So we have our grass-fed, grass-finished beef isolate protein, which you'll see that is very good for your gut. Very rich in collagen, amino acids like glycine. You can look into amino acids like proline as a supplement to help that collagen production, help that gut barrier function. You need to really dial in all aspects of your health to have clear skin. So we need to look at stuff like the arginine lysine balance in the body. You need to look at stuff like, are you getting enough vitamin C, which helps support, again, collagen production and skin health? Or your detoxification pathways, as we talked about, like N-acetylcysteine, DIM, CDG, are those you know open and actually helping you get rid of that estrogen and helping you have good hormone levels? Those are all key things to look at. Are you staying hydrated? There's so many things, okay? On the immune side of things, um, everything we just talked about is key. You know, are you exercising enough? Are you moving? Is your lymphatic system moving? Are you getting enough sleep? These things, when disrupted, can cause breakouts. Um, you know, like I was just really off my routine and uh, I had like a little pimple right here. It's gone now, but it's because I was off my routine and certain things that flare me up, I was, you know, probably consumed some seed oils and got some bad sleep. It is what it is, but at least now you know what is causing it. We're going to get deep into skin when I have Dr. Justin and Dr. Evan Brand here. That's what I really want to help people with because it's sort of individualized. And if you're having continuing issues, you probably should do something like a GI map gut test to figure out what's going on in your body. Do you have elevated levels of E. coli? Do you have a parasite? Which a little, it's a little overblown now, the whole parasite thing, but it can absolutely be a thing. Um, 
you know, there's tons of things that can ha be going on in your gut and hormones that you can figure out with lab testing. And trust me, when you dial those things in, your skin improves. Your skin is your body's largest organ. It is not separate from your body. Modern day dermatology, again, most dermatologists, not all, really separate the two. And they'll say diet doesn't really have anything to do with it. It does. It absolutely does. So I hope that helps you. Um, there's no single answer on how to get rid of acne, but there's some general principles that you can take from there. Try it out. Brennan, how would I structure a Santa Cruz Paleo approved diet for my dog without being too expensive? I got you. So I have my little dog Churro and I just like, I don't even post about what I feed him too much because he's so little and now I have money. So like, I'm like feeding him like grass fed ground beef and putting an egg yolk on top and some sardines. It's actually not insanely expensive, but we're not even going to talk about that. For a big dog like Eli, Joe's dog, here's what he does. And I would totally agree with this. You can get a good grain free dog food. Okay. And you need to look at the ingredients. You need to make sure it's pretty high quality. I'm not sure about exact brands. I think he has Taste of the Wild or something like that. There's some good brands out there. Good grain-free dog food where the first ingredients are meat of some sort. Big fan of venison, big fan of beef, big fan of lamb for dogs, okay? Now, I say grain-free, and you'll see all these articles saying, oh my God, dogs fed a grain-free diet. Like, there's issues with that. In that study where a lot of people recommend against a grain-free diet for dogs, they are giving the dogs a grain-free food that is filled with seed oils and legumes also. So that's not really a good study. That doesn't really make any sense to me, okay? So I do not think dogs will function poorly on a grain-free diet. If you want to add in some rice or something like that to your dog's food, I think that's fine. And now we get into that. So you get a scoop of this grain-free dog food, which should be relatively affordable, and then you spruce it up with other nutrients. You can get beef liver from the store, chop that up, put it on their food. It's actually very affordable. You can get egg yolks or just raw eggs, put it on there. I wouldn't do too many raw egg whites because it could start to bind to biotin, but you can do some raw eggs on there. You could do sardines. Sardines are extremely affordable. Um, just food scraps, in all honesty, just make sure you're not putting a bunch of garlic and onions on your food, then giving it to your dog. That's really the way. Some beef tallow on top of that grain-free food. That's how you feed your dog well. Putting in some bone broth into that grain-free food and having them consume that. They will be super healthy. I'm sure you've seen uh, Eli in some of my videos, the Black Lab. He's one of the healthiest dogs I've ever seen. Churro is obviously very healthy. Feed your dogs well. And yeah, you don't have to do one of those insane things where people are feeding their dogs like Wagyu. That's obviously just not attainable. Brendan, with summer coming up, what are the best sunscreen brands to use? Okay, well, I can tell you what I wouldn't use right out the gate. When we look at what happens with most chemical-based sunscreens, the active ingredients in many of those being avobenzone, oxybenzone, homosalate, avobenzone and oxybenzone poorly react with chlorine, okay? And they create toxic substances when they react with chlorine. Guys, how insane is this? You've heard people like Dr. Andrew Huberman and Dr. Rhonda Patrick, and even on uh, uh, this podcast, All In, these four billionaires talk, one of, the, one of them is an expert in science, and they warn against these sunscreen chemicals, okay? Certain places have banned these chemicals. Hawaii, banned them. Alaska, I think, banned them. Key West, Florida, banned them. Why did they ban them? They said, when people are just swimming in our oceans with these chemicals on them, the reefs are dying and marine life is dying, okay? That's how bad these things are. It's just insane to me that people are still using these and then people go, oh, you're anti-sunscreen. You want No, use a mineral-based sunblock, non-nano zinc oxide being the active ingredient. That is the gold standard in sun protection, okay? I'm not saying to not wear sun protection. This is like, there's mineral-based sunscreens everywhere. You can find one with non-nano zinc oxide, okay? What I prefer to use is this because it's just beef tallow and non-nano zinc oxide. That's what I use, okay? What you use is up to you. I would just, I would just really warn against spreading oxybenzone, avobenzone, and some of these other chemical-based sunscreens onto your skin. We know that they are endocrine disruptors. We know that there are some correlations with those chemical-based sunscreens and skin cancer, okay? It is the most backward shit ever. And for people in the comments or whatever and videos that I've done to say that, oh my God, he's anti-sunscreen. No, I'm not. Again, no, I am not. There are two forms of sunscreen. One is considered better and provides better protection. That is mineral-based sunscreen. Active ingredients there, non-nano zinc oxide. So look for that. Uh, be careful about ones that say on the front mineral-based sunscreen. And then you look at the back and there is some of those chemicals like avobenzone, oxybenzone in there. Uh, but yeah, why would you want to wear something that can potentially harm your health? If you're trying to protect yourself, protect yourself, throw on a hat, throw on a long sleeve, and throw on some non-nano zinc sunblock. Do that. Brennan, can you make a lactase enzyme for improved lactose digestion? Because all the ones in the store have BS ingredients. We are working on a Santa Cruz Paleo digestive enzyme formula. And yes, 
there will be lactase in there, which is the enzyme that helps digest lactose. Um, we're also going to have many other enzymes in there. So this is something I've talked about where if you have a slight dairy intolerance, not some like crazy reaction to dairy, but just like a slight eh, I've talked about how I took the lactase enzyme along with reintegrating dairy, and now I feel like my body just loves dairy so much. I can eat cheese, I can drink milk, and yeah, the lactase enzyme, I feel like, helped train my body to do that. There's no studies on that or whatever, but that's just what worked for me, and many other people have tried that protocol, and it's worked for them. So in our Santa Cruz Paleo enzymes, which we are still working on, just dialing in, there's going to be lactase in there. And there's also going to be stuff like pepsin, which helps digest proteins. There's going to be stuff like amylase, which helps digest different types of uh, carbohydrates. It's just going to be amazing. There's going to be stuff in there like papaya. So papain is an enzyme from papaya that helps digest proteins. Uh, we're also going to have some other stuff like ginger root, which helps digestion tons. So I'm really stoked for it. We're formulating the perfect enzyme. Uh, we just got to wait until it's out. Brendan, for all the construction workers out there that don't have access to a refrigerator after they leave the house in the morning, and they don't know what food to pack, everybody's probably just going to the gas station getting some bullshit. I've seen all out there. I feel for you. What can you eat? What can you do? Okay, this whole refrigeration thing, obviously refrigeration is amazing. It's important. However, if you're leaving the house at, let's say, 6 a.m., the night before, if you make something like chicken and potatoes or chicken and rice, and maybe some fruit for dessert, you can pack that into a glass Pyrex and bring it on the go. What you want to do is also pack on the side a sauce of some sort. You can make a big batch of chimichurri and then put it into a little to-go thing. You can do olive oil and lemon. And then basically what you do is you just pour that sauce onto what you've packed in your Pyrex. A chicken salad is another amazing thing for this. You just cook some grilled chicken or uh, chicken thighs. You can look at one of my recipes. You chop it up. You put it over a bed of lettuce. Put it into a glass Pyrex in your fridge. You can do like three or four of them. And then in the morning, you take that. You take some of your dressing that you've already made, chimichurri or maybe some you know, olive oil and lemon. You put that in a little thing. Boom, now you're at work. Get out your fork and napkin. You pour that dressing in there. Shake up that Pyrex, and you have good nutrition right there. It takes a little bit of planning, but... The options at the gas station are going to fuck over your health and like you're going to be able to work less. You're going to feel like shit. Trust me, it's worth it. Prep a little bit. Brennan, if you were diagnosed with cancer or like a really bad terminal illness, what would be the first steps you take? Absolutely. So I would get a few opinions for sure. Um, if I got cancer, I would probably go to Dr. Connolly. She is a doctor in Orange County who is a cancer researcher and she has her patients like literally eating the way I do. She's eating steak. She's eating sweet potatoes, all of that stuff. Um, I don't know if I would do chemotherapy. I've talked about this a few times, uh, just with my friends and family, like if chemotherapy really is the best option, how it will be looked back on. Um, I don't think chemotherapy will, will be looked back upon favorably. Okay. And I'm recording this now, 2024. Chemotherapy is the thing people do for cancer. I'm no expert on it whatsoever. Um, my hunch is that we will look back and we will be like, wow, we should not have done chemotherapy to people. It causes a lot of issues. Has it helped people cure people of cancer? Of course. So I'm not saying it'll be looked back on the same as like a lobotomy will be looked back on upon. But uh, I think we're going to look back and really question if we should have done chemotherapy for that many people in that way. So what would I do? I don't know. I'll put it up there with God and go seek a bunch of experts. Brendan, what do you recommend for a face moisturizer? And what do you think about olive oil as a face moisturizer? Okay. So what I recommend for a face moisturizer is beef tallow. Um, on the go, lately I've been having a, a thing of rose water in my car for just my skin feels a little dry. I can just spray myself with some rose water. That's literal just like hydration and it's very affordable. You can get it anywhere. Beef tallow, honey, beeswax. That's what I've been using lately. That new product that we have, that's what I use. Why I don't like olive oil is because when you really look olive oil up, it's usually at a three out of five on the comedogenic scale. What does that mean? The comedogenic scale is basically a rating of how stuff can clog your pores. How much can it clog your pores? Five out of five is very pore clogging. Zero out of five is none. You know, it's probably not going to clog your pores. For me, olive oil on my face can lead to clogged pores. I'm not against, you know, a little olive oil and some lotion or some soap. That doesn't really appear to mess me up, but I'm not using that on my face. If olive oil works for you on your face, that's totally good. But personally, I'd rather just put something plain like beef tallow, Beeswax is completely non comedogenic Honey is antimicrobial, antibacterial, non comedogenic That is what I use. Brendan, how can I deal with ADHD naturally? It's something I struggle with. Okay. ADHD is one of the most controversial topics I've ever, talk, I've ever discussed, right? And now with all the content with Cookie King that he's like taking Adderall all the time, a lot of people have been talking to me about ADHD. Obviously, I've done the content to tell you how ADHD was invented as a disease. I'm not saying it's not real. I'm not saying people don't have focus issues. And if you want to call it ADHD, that's fine. 
but ADHD was invented, okay? What do I mean by that? There is no way to tell somebody has ADHD through simple brain scans, okay? You just can't. You cannot diagnose ADHD through brain scans. It is done through a questionnaire. The questionnaire was built by the same companies that sell the medication, okay? So I have dove into this deep in content. Ritalin was the first major one. It's an amphetamine derivative, so it is an amphetamine. Does ADHD help you focus? Look, if you're taking low doses of an amphetamine, yeah, it's probably going to help you focus and like dial you in. It's going to crack you out. Let's be real, okay? That is what it's doing. Am I saying that, you know, if you need to study for nine hours and you take some ADHD meds, will you feel maybe dialed in and focused? Yeah, sure. For many people, they will. Am I, am I on that same token, am I saying that's a good idea? No, that is a horrible idea. It negatively affects your sleep. We see tons of issues, uh, you know, thyroid issues can develop, hormone issues can develop through taking amphetamines, guys. Like, let's be real. Um, this will also be looked back on as a tragedy that one out of 10 kids are taking this stuff. Trust me on that. I mean, that's already happening. They're, they're looking at it like, wow, we really messed up. You are getting marketed something from companies that make billions of dollars telling you you have an issue focusing and they are selling you meth. Okay? That is what is going on. I'm not here to tell you it's not helping you focus or that you have is no issues focusing. You might. What would I do instead? I would look towards natural compounds like alpha GPC. Alpha GPC can help cognitive function. There's other things like phosphatidylserine. Phosphatidylserine can help limit cortisol. So if you're somebody that feels sort of anxious and like, ah, you can maybe look into phosphatidylserine and L-theanine, something like that. Maybe alpha GPC, acetyl L-carnitine. But listen, here's the thing, man. In high school and some years of college, I really struggled focusing in some classes because guess what? I didn't give a shit about them, Okay. Now, be real with me. If you're watching this, be real. Am I somebody who's stupid and unsuccessful and can't focus on anything? No. Would I have built two multi-million dollar companies if I just couldn't focus on anything? No. I was diagnosed with ADHD when I was 13 years old. I was having trouble in school. I was acting out, whatever. I wasn't focusing on these teachers who I thought were just stupid and just didn't care about their subject at all, and I, I didn't care about it. So I didn't focus on some of that stuff. I probably was eating Pop-Tarts and going to school. Not enough exercise, not enough outdoors time. Okay? This is your story too, if you're watching this. My mom gets a recommendation from a counselor at school that I might have ADHD. She brings me to an office building. There's a lady sitting in front of me who all of her training is from pharmaceutical companies. Okay? There's literal pamphlets from pharmaceutical companies there. There's toys in that room that have pharmaceutical company logos on them. Okay? I sit down there. That lady within 15 minutes tells me that I need to be on an ADHD medication. Luckily, thank God, I took it a few times and I hated how I felt. Ever since then, my mom would give it to me and I would go, thanks, yeah, and I'd put it in my pocket and I would throw it in the bushes on the way to school. Hopefully some squirrels were, I don't know, some squirrels were methed up in that, in that area, okay? Would that have helped me focus in, um, you know, history class? Maybe. You need to find stuff that you're passionate about. You need to be able to be disciplined and get through school and focus on stuff that you might not find that interesting. You need to have your diet and overall brain health dialed in so you're not getting any of those external factors disrupting your focus, you know, is your sleep dialed in, all that. The fact that so many people have been convinced that if they can't focus on something that they don't like, they need to take amphetamines is so sad and it's absolutely insane, okay? That is my opinion on it. Next question. Let me know what you think below. Brennan, what is your opinion on superfood blends? You have amazing grass. You have AG1. Oh my God. You ever seen an ad for that? Uh, blue. What is the other one? Bloom Nutrition. Okay. Here's what's going on, guys. You are getting advertised bullshit. And I can tell you this from personal experience. Running a supplement company, you have tons of people that hit you up that are suppliers of ingredients. I've been hit up by these suppliers of, you know, those type of products, greens, powders, superfood blends. They will literally tell you the price that it's extremely cheap. They're using vegetable byproducts. You think the broccoli powder in there is beautiful broccoli that could have made it on the shelf? No, no, it's not because that would have gone to the shelf and been sold for more money. It is the nasty vegetable remnants that are being turned into a powder, okay? And so you're not getting any of the fiber also, which is where a lot of the benefits of eating vegetables and these superfoods come from. Then they're saying, oh my God, this like tests really high in antioxidants. This covers all of your bases of eating greens. No, it doesn't. No, it just doesn't, okay? 
And then what these companies do is they want to make it an all-in-one. So they throw everything in there. Oh, we have all the probiotics you need. Well, probiotics are complicated. I'm about to have a functional medicine doctor in here who will explain to you that everybody's gut is a bit different. And some of these probiotic species are what are called histamine producing. So if you just take a broad spectrum probiotic, you can sometimes get histamine issues. What does that look like? Uh, redness of the cheeks, runny nose, histamine issues, watery eyes. But people, these companies don't really care about that intricacy. They think people want probiotics and antioxidants. These are buzzwords and they want to get their greens and they're not eating enough greens. If we sell a powder that tastes good and looks green and has everything you need, we'll make a lot of money. And they do because these greens powders companies have hit me up and you're talking a couple bucks for one of those things. Why do you think they're one of the most advertised products? Why do you think every single influencer has posted Bloom Greens or AG1? Think about it from a business point of view. If I have $1 of margin here, can I pay every single influencer to post this product? No. Why? Because I would lose money. If this product cost me one penny and I sold it for $20, I could have every influencer post it because I have tons of margin in the product. Joe Rogan, we want you to post this AG1. What's your rate? A million dollars. Okay, whatever. <laughs> we make so much money on it. Okay, that's literally what is happening with these. Now, if you take them and you feel good, cool. I'm just saying it's not in probably my top 50 supplements that I would invest money into. With people struggling these days financially, there are so many supplements that you can take before that. Vitamin D, magnesium, creatine, a good protein powder. If you're an athlete, electrolytes. Boom, right there. There are tons of supplements that are way more worth your money than Bloom Greens or AG1 or something like that. So I'm really not a fan of them. Eat your fruits and vegetables for sure. You don't need that greens powder bullshit. It makes me mad. Brendan, what is the best sweetener? Well, this is an interesting question because it definitely gets down to preference. Obviously, I'm not really a fan of artificial sweeteners. Now, I will say on, in terms of arguing for artificial sweeteners, I think I could put sucralose down here because there's absolutely some bad studies with sucralose. There's some new ones that have just come out about T-cell. Yes, there's some animal studies in there but I would put sucralose down here, okay? Acylfame potassium is interesting. It's not something I'm a fan of, but I'd put it up here, okay? And you have aspartame, I'd put it here. I'm definitely not a fan of it. Monk fruit and stevia, I would put up here. These are natural products. Stevia is a small green plant that grows in the ground. I've picked the leaves right off stevia before you put them on your tongue. Those alkaloids are sweet and they don't mess with your blood sugar. Monk fruit, very similar thing. Doesn't mess with your blood sugar, okay? I would put honey and maple syrup a bit above those, but they come with the cost of they have sugar and they can affect your blood sugar. So if you're using them very often, that can be an issue. If you're trying to cut out calories and you're using honey and maple syrup, then, well, that can be an issue. They are calorically dense. So stevia, monk fruit, honey, maple syrup, that is what I would put up there. Um, any type of sugar, I would put pretty low. Processed sugar, yes, cane sugar is processed. Coconut sugar is processed. Brown rice syrup is processed. I'll put those pretty low down there. So that's what I think in terms of sweetener. Uh, fruit juice is great. I mean, oh my God, like, uh, you know, you can do stuff with fruit juices. I think that's interesting. Again, there's going to be some calories there. So if you're trying to do low or no calorie, stevia and monk fruit, definitely my favorite. Brendan, I've been concerned with my girlfriend's weight for a while and I want her to get healthier. How, how can I broach this situation? He's got that thick, thick girl with him, okay? And she may, might be getting thicker and he's worried. He's like, dude, where is this going to be in a few years? Like, this is concerning, okay? Maybe you're into health and wellness and into fitness and she's just getting thicker than a snicker. So here's what you need to do. You need to get someone stoked on being healthy. You can't just come at it and be like, you're fat, I'm getting sick of this, you know, I'm sick of bringing Chick-fil-A home and you're just eating all the damn food. What are we gonna do? Start out with basic stuff and it starts with exercise, okay? Obviously, if somebody is in a calorie deficit, they're gonna start to lose weight. And in my opinion, one of the best ways to get there is increase your amount of exercise. You can also start to educate her on the types of food to eat and start cooking her food. Be like, tonight, I'm going to make dinner, okay? And you make a healthy meal. And you say, we're going to walk before and walk after dinner. It's really good for digestion. And just, it's just nice to walk with your girl. Start with that type of stuff, going on hikes, doing a group fitness class together. Start to get her to work out because when, once you start working out, the real reason why it works so well, obviously it helps burn calories, but it gets you into the mentality of you want to feel better for your workouts. The first times you go to a workout, it sucks, but something shifts in people and it, they just crave that. Your dopamine system starts to crave that workout. That's why people are addicted to the gym, much like myself. It takes a little work to get there, but you can get her there. So it starts with education and lead by example and just don't have bullshit food in the house, okay? 
And if honestly you have some like grave difference where you're just like, listen, the type of lifestyle I want to live is healthy and you're just not on it, leave her behind. Go find another one. My God, people waste so much time with somebody they don't like. W what are you doing? Why are you doing that? Like with my girl, she doesn't eat the exact same way that I do. But she's in amazing shape. She goes to her workout classes. We go on hikes. We go to the, the track sometimes and run. It's awesome. It's just great. Do I care if she eats some seed oils? No, I'm not going to freak out. That's just not how it is. I'm not that strict. She likes to have a little bit more Mexican food than I do. However, she's in amazing shape and she gets all the nutrients that she needs. She'll eat the steak with me. You know, she'll eat a good protein shake. Like she'll get that nutrition in. That is important. If she just came home one day and was just like, eh, I just don't really care. I'm just going to eat Chick-fil-A all day and I'm going to balloon up to 300 pounds. That would be a deal breaker for me. And she knows that she would never do that. It's not what she would want to do ever. So yeah, you don't have to be exact. You don't have to be so strict. But if you guys just have complete differences on what you see as healthy, that's a big deal. And you might want to leave that, that thick girl behind. Brennan, what products can I use to glow up holistically? I think this dude's talking about some looks maxing type shit. You know, what can you do? Okay, so on just the hormone side of it, what you can do to look better as a man is increase your testosterone levels. Now, you definitely shouldn't go towards artificial, you know, gear to use this. If you dial in your sleep and start eating more steak and eggs, literally that will increase your testosterone levels. You will start to feel better. Lifting heavy weights can also increase your testosterone levels. Over time, that's going to give you a more masculine look that a lot of these looks maxers are going for. Although some of them look weird, like, I don't know, like, like estrogenic, like males, whatever. That's a different topic. Um, there is that mastic gum that I chew. I use modern primal provisions. I think there's a code Santa Cruz there, but whatever. That mastic gum is just Greek mastic gum. And there's also some benefits for your gut with that and oral microbiome. I do chew that stuff. If you ever see me chewing gum, that is what I'm chewing. And yes, that would actually help to work your jaw, okay? So would eating steak. So I don't think you like have to use some mastic gum for that. So that will definitely help. Other stuff that can help is the beef tallow products that I've talked about to dial in your skincare. Um, you know, using a nice organic lotion. I use organic Jaguar, code Santa Cruz on that. That's my buddy's company. And that's, uh, it, you know, it makes your skin look nice, okay? Other things you can do is get in the sauna. Sweating is really good for your skin health overall and just your body overall. Also helps, it's been shown to help detoxify heavy metals and BPA, okay? Yes, you can literally sweat out BPA. You can look into Dr. Rhonda Patrick's compilation of research on this. You sweat out bisphenol A, that's good. So microplastics out of your body. So getting in the sauna can definitely help. Those are some things right there that I'd start with. Um, I use a natural toothpaste called Boca, B-O-K-A. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps you. Brennan, I struggle with some seasonal allergies. What can I take to, you know, help me with that? Okay, there's a few things. Quercetin. Quercetin is a supplement that can help prevent allergies, okay? Help prevent some of that histamine interaction there, okay? Take quercetin. N-acetylcysteine. N-acetylcysteine is amazing for lung health, liver health. It can definitely help with some of those allergy symptoms that you might be experiencing. And the last thing is local raw honey. In some studies, local honey has been shown to help with allergies, okay? There's other stuff like getting in the sauna, like I've just talked about, that can help with allergies. But those are really uh, a couple things, three things right there that can help with allergies. And I've told that to some of my friends and they've done it and they've experienced some benefits there. So that is it for this week's AMA. As always, santacruzpaleo.com. Go get some products. Go get some peach electrolytes. Go get some protein. Go get some creatine. Food of the gods. Magnesium caps. Please take your magnesium. Oh my God. And yeah, we love you guys so much. We appreciate you. Stay healthy. We got some fun guests coming on the podcast. So leave your questions below for the next AMA. We'll dive into them next week. Let's get it. Peace.